So once your milk paint is all dry, it's then time to choose a top coat. And with milk paint, you can pretty much choose almost any top coat that we have in the Fusion Mineral Paint line. However, I do recommend that you stay away from the water-based coatings. So that would be our clear tough coat or our glossy tough coat. What can happen when you're using a water-based coating is it can actually go a little bit cloudy. So we don't recommend that you use a water base over top of milk paint. So what are your options? We have lots of other things in the range here. My personal favorite is hemp oil. I call it liquid gold. We also have the beeswax hemp oil blends that you could use if you just wanted to wax. And then we've got all the other different types of tinted waxes and colored waxes and scented waxes that you can use. We also have the stain and finishing oil. And this is really, really fabulous over top of the milk paint. It's really easy to apply. Or if you want to, you can also use the gel stain. So you have so many different options to choose from. And really it comes down to personal preference. So when you're consulting with your clients, you may wanna ask them, what's the look that they want to go for? Do they wanna add a little bit of an aged look, maybe a bit of a glazed finish? They want a glazed finish, they could always use the stain and finishing oil to give them that glazed effect. If they want something just natural and plain without any, you know, any color at all, you can use any of the untinted waxes if they wanna wax, or you could use the natural stain and finishing oil. And that's a really, really strong water resistance finish, great for kitchen cabinets, great for heavy use items. So those products are really fabulous. Again, the gel stain is really, really good for hard wearing durable areas. So say someone does their flooring in milk paint and they wanna add that to it, they can which is super awesome. Other things to keep in mind with hemp oil, this is a really, really fabulous finish. It's one of my absolute favorites to use. This is great for anyone, a beginner. I would say if anyone's walking into your store, it's the first time that they're using milk paint, I would sell them hemp oil to go along with it because it's the easiest top coat to use. It smells like crushed walnuts. It's very, very beautiful to work with. It's therapeutic. You can get it on your hands. It's not going to hurt you. Um, really, really fabulous. But a lot of people are like, oh, isn't it gonna change my color? Although the oil looks green, it actually does not change your milk paint color. However, you may notice that once your milk paint has dried, it may not quite be the true unique color that it should be. That's because it needs a top coat to bring out the vibrancy of the color. Don't panic. We've had many people call us worried saying they painted their milk paint and it's not the right color. My first question is, did you top coat it? And then they say no, and I say, well, once you put the top coat on, the true color is gonna come out. So I wanna show you a couple of different uh, options on two different colors so you can see what they look like. I'm gonna start off with my favorite, which is the hemp oil wood finish. Again, I recommend this for virtually anyone who is a, a novice and hasn't used it before. Um, milk paint or any sort of finish, this is the easiest one. You can't screw it up. So I literally just poured it on. I'm just gonna use a brush and wipe, wipe it on. You can apply it with a rag, with a brush. You do wanna wipe away the excess, that's one thing to keep in mind, but you can see how immediately the color starts to richen and deepen, and then we're gonna wipe back that excess. So then you wipe back the excess. You can let the hemp oil sit on there for a couple of hours if you want to, but you don't wanna let it sit for more than 12 to 24 hours because any excess pooling, what's gonna happen there is it's gonna go tacky and sticky. So you wanna make sure that you do remove the excess. One, maybe two coats maximum. I think one is more than enough, um, but it also depends on how dry the wood is. That'll tell you. So we've got the true, rich, vibrant color now, and it's not green, so you don't have to worry about your color going green. All right, let's switch over to the one of the tinted waxes, just to show you how easy it is to buff that on. All right, let's go with Aging. I really like that one, it's one of my favorites. So Aging just has a little bit of uh, pigment to it, and you can apply the wax with anything that you like. You can use a brush, you can use a cloth, you can lightly dust it on, you can buff it in, put some over here. Keeping in mind that the tinted wax that you choose is really gonna significantly change the color of, of your piece. So I think it's a really great idea to have in your store. 
some samples just like this of what the different color waxes look like on the different colors. And then you can take a lint-free cloth and just buff. All right, over here. I always say that the wax and the tinted wax really brings out the depth and the beauty of working with milk paint is that you see the wood grain, you can feel the wood grain, and that wax is really going to get in there and show all of that beautiful detail. Again, that's one of the key benefits of using milk paint, especially on raw porous wood, is you actually really see all those beautiful fine details. All right, so that's what that looks like with those two there. And the last one, we will go to, let's do the stain and finishing oil. And we're gonna do it in natural. So the natural is no pigment and it's just gonna help seal it up really, really super strong and durable. It's gonna be more durable than the hemp oil is. However, SFO does have a smell to it, so it may not be for everyone. All right, there we go. And typically I like to apply this with a brush as well. Put it on there. A little goes a long way with this, so you don't need to too much. Now, the one thing to keep in mind when you're using SFO, which is an oil-based product, this particular oil base and the gel stain, those will turn yellow over time, sometimes almost immediately, but a week from now, a month from now, a year from now, it'll go increasingly more yellow. So that's something to keep in mind when picking your finish, especially if you've got a really light color, like this one here, which is our beautiful London Fog color. Just taking away the excess there. And then you could take a, um, like a, um, one of our removing pads or just remove the excess with a cloth. It doesn't look very yellow here. It looks pretty neutral, but it is possible if this is a, a, a lighter color, like, um, like the white robe color, then you would absolutely see a little bit more of a yellow tinge to it. So there you have it. Super easy. You can choose virtually any top coat you like. You want to stay away from the water-based top coats as much as possible. Keep in mind that some of the oil-based top coats, such as gel stain and stain and finishing oil, can yellow a bit, sometimes immediately, sometimes more over time, and especially with the more coats that you apply to. And the different top coats, depending on what you choose, you may have different sheens as well. So it's really important that you and your staff are really well versed, have tried all the different top coats, play with them, work with them, know what you love, and be able to really consult with your clients. If you want something that's more of a matte finish, matte finish, great for the beginner, I would go with hemp oil, super straightforward and easy. If someone wants a food safe, food grade finish, I would go with the beeswax finish, but we never say that milk paint is food safe. We don't recommend that you put um, any sort of food onto a painted surface. But if they just had a cutting board, I would recommend this top coat. It's the best. All right. Well, there you have it. I hope that you've enjoyed learning a little bit about top coats with milk paint.